Hey, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Them Nerds, uh, where we are going to bring to you today a little bit of a news roundup. We've had a lot of things happening out in uh, the nerd sphere, and uh, we want to bring that to you. So first of all, before we begin, let me just remind you that we are running a contest uh, until we hit our 100th subscriber. Uh, we are going to be giving away a Funko Pop of Spider-Man Far From Home. You need to subscribe to the channel. You need to comment on at least one video and you will be entered in to win. Uh, make sure that you do comment because we don't know who all of you guys are. Uh, your, your subscriptions are set to private oftentimes and we don't know who is who. Uh, additionally, uh, you can turn your notifications on so that every time we post a new video, you are notified. If you love us that much, you should definitely want to know. And not just our moms. I know. My mom doesn't even watch this channel. <laughs> Jerry has a better mom than I do, I guess. <laughs> My wife watches. Hi. Uh, she doesn't. A little. Uh, all right. So uh, that's the contest. Let's get into the news. First, uh, lots of news about DC and their film universe having delays. You're going to see a common thread in a lot of the stories that we're going to talk to you about today. And that common thread is COVID-19. Uh, lots of stuff has been delayed. Of course, movie theaters are mostly shut down because of this. Uh, DC's delays are blamed a lot on that. So, uh, Warner Brothers already delayed one of their big money films, uh, the remake of Dune um, to October of 2021. It's already been pushed back. And it, it, everybody sort of thought, well, if they're gonna push back that kind of a film, they're probably going to do the same thing with the superhero films and that's what they're doing. So The Batman has been pushed back to March of 2022. Uh, Shazam 2 has been pushed all the way back to June of 2023. Black Adam was taken off the slate completely with a date to be determined. Uh, there are two spots open on DC's release schedule, June 3rd and August 5th, both of 2022. So the, the idea is it's probably going to fall on one of those. And The Flash, uh, which is the solo film, uh, November of 2022. Lots and lots of delays. The way that it looks now, you're going to see a, a graphic here on screen. Wonder Woman 1984 set for December of 2020. Suicide Squad set for August of 2021. The Batman, March of 2022. Black Adam, who knows. This one I didn't even know existed. DC Super Pets. It's an animated DC, it's starring Crypto the dog. Okay. Uh, that's uh, May of 2022, The Flash, November of 2022, Shazam 2, uh, June of 2023, and Aquaman 2 is still floating around out there. Get it? Floating? In the ocean. Okay, I'll give up. Don't, don't unsubscribe. Uh, December of 2022, if that is even still the date. That remains to be seen. Who knows, with this extended universe that they're trying to build, with this multiverse they're trying to build, who knows if these things are going to affect other films. Uh, speaking of DC's uh, stab at a multiverse, uh, big hints that Warner Brothers wants Gal Gadot, uh, who of course is Wonder Woman, to be heavily involved in the Flash movie. Makes sense. Her movie was good, made a lot of money. Uh, if I was Warner Brothers, I would do the same thing. Right. All right. That does it for DC for the day. Uh, let's move right along. Um, Jerry, Spider-Man, what's happening? There's all kinds of things. What's going on? I feel like I'm a newscaster. Uh, Over to you, so Jerry. <laughs> Thanks, Tony. Breaking uh, news. Jerry, live on the scene. So uh, Spidey, uh, Spider-Man has... Uh, uh, I feel like I said that really weird. But, uh, Spidey, Spider <laughs> Spider <-Man>. so, <laughs> Spider uh, Spider-Man! So, I turned into Chris Rock. So, Spider-Man has uh, added a huge plethora of new, character, new characters and old characters to the uh, recently announced Spider-Man 3 that is going to start filming actually next week in New York. Uh, 
Jamie Foxx has been uh, announced to rebrand or reemerge as his Electro character from uh, Amazing Spider-Man 2. Why? Uh, I, you know, I think that uh, from what I had read was that uh, during the Amazing Spider-Man 2 production, uh, a large portion of the movie was sent over to Kevin Feige to ask what he thought of the movie. And one of the only redeemable uh, ideas that he had was that Jamie Foxx was actually stellar in the role. He, his biggest complaint was that Andrew Garfield cried too much. And because of him crying throughout the whole movie, when Gwen Stacy finally dies, it made it less sad because everybody was already used to him crying about everything else. So I think that it's uh, going to be like, you know, rebuilding of the character. And especially if we're trying to get to a Sinister Six kind of idea, you're going to want to have, uh, you don't want to have to have 40 movies play out before you get a six characters of villain you can make a right. super group. So it's not, I think it's not that hard to have this idea that that would be a good idea. Speaking of which, uh, Danny Denon, I believe is how you say his last name, from Amazing Spider-Man 2 is supposedly also in talks to come back. He played uh, kind of like a hodgepodge of Hobgoblin and uh, Green Goblin in right. uh, that movie. And not memorable. Also, no, it was actually was a very weak uh, translation of the character. And uh, Kirsten Dunst is also in talks to uh, rep uh, reprise, is that the right word I'm looking That's for? That's it. Uh, her role as Mary Jane Watson. Um, so I'm guessing that what we're going to be seeing is Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garf Garfield also in this movie. There's just no way that you're going to have all these side characters appearing and you're not going to see this, right. which I think is kind of amazing because just today we got the news that uh, Benedict Car Cumberbunch or Doctor Strange <laughs> is going to be uh, also included into Amazing Spider-Man. I'm sorry, uh, whatever this movie's going to be called. The Spider-Man, I don't know. Spider-Man 3. I'm sure it's going to have something with home in it. Yes. Spider-Man and his homeboys. Oh, maybe that, was, that might be it. Right. It's like the adaptation of Spider-Man and his amazing Write friends. Write that down now. Yep. Top Trademark. Idea. Yeah, I bought that website. I know you're listening, Feige. <laughs> Let me say it. I bet you they will. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry has a very dedicated FBI agent in his phone listen to all of his ideas <laughs> still translates all ideas. them to marvel yeah uh i i have to say i i, I like the idea of of mary jane coming back in the form of uh kirsten dunst uh the jamie fox one I, if they de-cheese the character a little bit and kind of uh you know let it build you know on its own in, in the new universe it's it'll probably okay I, I tell you what this this shouldn't color my judgment this much but hearing the itsy bitsy spider played on electrical wires at, at the climax of, of Amazing Spider-Man 2 was one of the most annoying movie moments of my entire life. I wanted to just flip the seat in front of me and walk out of the theater. I hated it so much. It soured me on, on that whole franchise. And when they said, oh, we're not making a third one, I was like, good, you deserve it for itsy bitsy spider. Anyway. Are there any other characters from the Spider-Man verse that you would like to see come back? If we're bringing somebody back, uh, the only one that I can really uh, think of um, would be uh, somehow bringing back Gwen Stacy, reversing reversing the death. Uh, I think that this you know interaction with the multiverse uh, can kind of retcon a little bit of what happened. That's probably the only one that I would really uh, really want to bring back. Uh, I definitely don't want any part of Spider-Man 3's uh, version of Venom, i uh, not interested. I also Doc think Ock that, would be great, but I don't, I, I don't think that's going to be possible. Yeah. I also think that, uh, you know, Sally Fields did a good job as Aunt May. And so you have the idea that, you know, like similar, she, she, her role looked very similar to me uh, from the uh, Into the Spider-Verse role of uh, Aunt May. So yeah. they, they could show something like that. I don't know whether or not Tony McGuire is going to come back, but if you bring a couple of the, those characters back, I think it'd be a good one. Is he doing anything else? Um, I don't know. Is there like a C? What was that movie? Sea Biscuit? I mean, there's like Sea Biscuit too. Did he get shot? So. I, I don't think so. I Does think that one ends pretty distinctively. Um, maybe he's just using him to glue letters. I don't know. Oh, ouch. <laughs> Snug. <laughs> uh, can see. Oh, my goodness. Continuing on with a nice little nugget of Marvel news uh, the Modoc animated series is completed it's done it's in the can and it is ex expected to come out in 2021 uh, which is very exciting i think that they have a lot of uh, 
uh, a lot of opportunity to, to make some funny stuff there. Um, what else we have? What, what else is going on in the Marvel world out there? Uh, rumor has it that Ryan Reynolds is looking uh, or is being offered by Disney a multi-year, multi-picture, huge contract to go ahead and have him be like a floater between multiple franchises. Uh, and I would think that actually, if you're going to be pulling all these crazy Spider-Mans out of everywhere for Spider-Man 3, it would be hilarious if you accidentally pulled Deadpool into this world because he ha happens to look just like him. Like there's somebody collecting Spider-Man and they're like, yeah. you there. And he's like, I'm not, who? And they snatch him he up. He has the baby hands. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. I, I actually, I love the idea. I've seen floating around the internet for a while that uh, with the uh, passing of the legendary Stan Lee, that uh, we have a, a Deadpool cameo in every movie uh, instead of a Stan Lee cameo, which I think would be super cool. Uh, especially if he's in full costume, like he's just some random dude in a maroon and black leather costume sitting at a coffee shop, like reading the paper. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. I, I, uh, I hope they do lock him down because I think he does a good job with that character and uh, it, it, it needs to make its way over to the MCU. People are going to be all about it. So uh, let's see. There's one more Marvel nugget today, right? Yeah. Love and Thunder. Oh, two more Marvel Thunder. nuggets then. Yeah. Uh, Thor Love and Thunder has been announced uh, that by uh, Natalie Portman that it is going to take the helm from The Mighty Thor, which is the uh, comic book uh, uh, title that used Jane Foster as Thor. Um, in the comics, uh, Jane Foster is riddled with cancer and is being treated with uh, chemo and is dying slowly. Um, and Nick Fury whispers something into Thor's ear that makes him no longer worthy to hold the hammer. So he drops the hammer um, to uh, female Thor picking it up. And so the whole time you watch it, you don't know who it is and you end up finding out that it is Jane Foster that is the new Thor. But the only problem is every time she turns back and forth to Thor, she kicks out her own chemotherapy, slowly killing her. That's a cool storyline. Yeah. That's, I, I, that's one of the few times uh, in recent history that I've been like really into a uh, uh, comic and it was, it was that one. Uh, of course you have all the people on the internet crying about why do we need a female Thor, which drives me crazy. Read the comics, bro. Yeah. Th these are the, speaking of crybaby fans, uh, the other one that I've seen people crying about a lot kind of takes us into our next story. When they announced that they had cast She-Hulk, I saw people on the internet saying, why do they have to turn Hulk into a woman? Yeah. Have you read a comic book? Yeah, you should maybe go like, back 40 years. Have you looked at a poster, even? Giant green girl in the poster? Anyway, She-Hulk also has some interesting news. What do we have for, for She-Hulk today? Uh, they will be casting a young Bruce Banner for that series. I'm guessing probably to tie together their closeness as a family or something. I'm sure that has something to do with it. That's, that's interesting. And I, I, when, when you, you're the one that brought that to my attention and it made me think, are they only going to use a young Bruce Banner in flashbacks or is this series going to take place before the current continuity of the MCU? And we're going to see somebody who's playing, you know, basically Mark Ruffalo before all of this. Stuff I don't, happens. I think that you will see Mark Ruffalo because I know that he was signed to a contract to appear in the show. So I assume that it's, these are more flashback driven. Right. Right. Uh, maybe, I don't know if they're going to go into her, her origin story on uh, the actual series or if it's going to be sort of a, like, yeah, you already know kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, but if they do spend a lot of time in the past, it would be, it would be good for them to cast somebody uh, to kind of take on that role. Super cool. Mark Ruffalo shows up. Mark Ruffalo seems like he's a huge fan. Yeah. I, I think Mark Ruffalo is very similar to Chris Hemsworth where they are like, no, this is my character. I don't have any intention of going anywhere. Yeah. Which is what, every film industry that has a character that you're building needs to be asking people when they hire people, is this something you plan on doing? So you gain a career or are you making this your career? Because right. you know, that it really does make a difference when you're four movies in and someone decides, I don't want to do this anymore. Right. They should be signing these people to like 10 picture deals. Yeah. But anyway, super excited about She-Hulk. That's going to be a good one. Uh, all these Disney plus TV shows, man, they're just going to be so good. This is like, 10 year old us would never believe it. Well, thank God they're coming out with shows you can watch from home scenes. It doesn't seem like we're ever going to get to leave it. So <laughs> true. <laughs> true. All right. So uh, pivoting a bit away from uh, Marvel, some other news this past week, uh, Jurassic world dominion 
again, due to COVID related circumstances, has been pushed back to 2022. Um, there have been positive cases on set, I guess, which, uh, you know, makes for things uh, to be pretty bad. Uh, also, uh, some cancellations uh, from Netflix that I have a lot of people upset. Uh, GLOW, uh, which stands for Gorgeous Ladies of Wrestling, which focuses on the formation and uh, early stages of that wrestling federation, which I remember fondly from my youth, uh, canceled. Uh, apparently, they, they revoked the, the plan to have a, a new season and they said it's too hard production is too hard because of covid and we're done um, another cancellation from netflix teenage bounty hunters which has kind of gained this like cult status uh i i haven't gotten a chance to watch it yet but a good friend of mine who i trust uh his judgment on these sorts of things he's he's like if you haven't watched it yet you're missing out uh i've seen about 10 angry posts from him on social media about this show and uh, it, it appears to be a pretty cool show. They dropped it after one season. Not really sure why. Netflix has a weird history of dropping good shows. Well, I think that right now the problem with, with COVID is it's, it's hard for them to figure out what, where they need to put their focus, their money at, so they can get as much stuff out as you can. And when you have large ensemble cast, it's very hard to film around that idea. I did see that the director and writers for GLOW were asking for a, at least a two-hour movie to be able to wrap everything up for. I hope so. Yeah. I hope so. One of, one of my favorite shows, and maybe something we should do for Throwback Thursday one of these weeks, was the TV show Jericho, and they canceled it unceremoniously, and one of my very favorite things, like it did my fanboy heart well, was that they came back and did that final movie to wrap it up and kind of yeah. give you some closure. I wish every show that gets canceled, like, unceremoniously would do that. Yeah. It's so frustrating to be invested in a show, and then they're like, nah, it's done. Yeah, well, then Netflix is going to have a lot of two-hour movies because they don't <laughs> seem to be able to keep a show on. So makes me a little bit worried uh, for Umbrella Academy. That's a, yeah. that's a big cast, especially when you have a movie like or a show like that's what was it, The Amazing Sabrina or whatever it was, and that show was really well. It was a big money bringer for them, and they just up and cut it without anybody knowing. So. Right, Chilling Adventures of Sabrina or Chilling Yeah Chilling Adventures, yeah. Uh, Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Yeah, version two. I, uh, yeah, yeah like, that's another one. Altered Carbon they canceled. Like yeah. I don't know. Anyway, uh, one last uh, nugget uh, coming from outer space and the future. Jerry, tell us about S Star Trek news. Today they did a Star Trek, uh, kind of like a Comic-Con for Star Trek, but uh, they announced that they are going to be adding a new animated series for uh, kids called Star Trek Prodigy. And it's basically taking place uh, where a few teenage Starfleet uh, Academy kids steal a ship and go flying off into the cosmos and they end up running into uh captain janeway of star trek voyager uh with kate uh mulgrew which some of you may know from uh netflix uh orange is the new black as red uh reprising her role in uh using her voice to narrate for the show that is so great i love the idea of of it, you know continuing to involve some of these fan favorite characters picard of course is just you know that one's that belongs on a shelf all by itself, but bringing back Janeway, super cool, yeah. super cool. All right, reminder one more time, we are still running our 100 subscri subscriber contest. You must uh, subscribe to the channel and comment on at least one of our videos so we know who you are. Don't forget to turn on notifications so you know when we post new videos. Uh, and follow us on social media. Uh, we are at we Them Nerds on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Definitely check out Instagram. Uh, my, my partner in crime over here has been doing some super cool uh, spotlights on, uh, lately it's been Rogue, uh, which is a character I've always liked, but I didn't know a lot about her uh, apparently because I'm learning all kinds of stuff looking at, uh, at Jerry's posts over there on, on Instagram. So definitely check that out. It is well worth your time. Uh, it's like having a steroid injection of comic book uh, character uh, every day. Uh, only Thank event. you for joining us. Uh, we will see you soon. Be good. Be good to each other. Bye. Later.